I am standing on a very windy slope that is Carrack Castle. Carrack Castle built in 1142 by Baldwin I of Jerusalem. This was one of the castles for Ultra Jordan, O-U-L-T, Ultra Jordan. <laughs> it's a very, very interesting castle. It's what's called a spur castle because it has natural fortifications on each side and you only have one entry point. Like I'd mentioned previously about spur castles, it's absolutely brilliant for defense, but if your supply line is cut, you are absolutely screwed. Let's go and have an explore of Caddock Castle, a Crusader castle from 1142. As we walk around this castle, I'm actually going to tell you about a guy called Renard de Chillon, a um, crusader um, from uh, Frank, a French minor nobility, and his impact on this area. But just have a look at that escarpment. Imagine trying to, at, um, Saladin trying to attack this fort. When we've looked at um, medieval architecture before, and this is a uh, crusader castle, so it fits into that period, we talk about defences, and this is one of the defences, the arrow slit. And you can remember when the other time we looked at that Venturi holes, they were much smaller. So with this, you can actually get deep in to the cavity to be able to fire your arrows left and right. But this is an outer wall of this absolutely formidable spur castle of Kanak. Just having a look at the different, you can see where different parts of the castle were built at different times. But the thing that's striking me really interesting is these corbels just up here. That potentially tells me that another like floor or an extension <clears throat> was on the castle resting on those corbels. Fabulous. So just looking at those corbels just there. What somebody is telling me that there is more to the castle that is under our feet here and so I'm going to go down to the reception rooms and see what's down there. I'm off for a walk with my nemesis the stairs going down to a reception hall underneath Kadak Castle. Okay I've walked down probably about 50 stairs and oh well spotted thank you very much I almost uh, tripped over another stair. So that looks like a fireplace. <clears throat> the natural light there. We come down these stairs, and this was an exit um, for the Mamluks. And then the Ottomans, when they took over the castle, they sealed it off. Wow into a reception room. Reception hall, 80 meter. 80 meter long reception hall from um, Mamluk Saladin. The throne was down here where Saladin would have sat. So walking down, we're almost to the end of the 80 meters of this reception hall. And then there was another castle entrance there, but that has been closed off subsequently. Down the end there, there's a natural niche in the wall where the attendant is telling me that the throne would have been for Saladin. Okay. 
How big the reception is, yes. So what's this one? An exit? No exit. Ah, this is the way they communicated and the service. Ah, it amplifies with this shape of the roof, becomes a megaphone so that Saladin could communicate. So walking down out of this 80 metre reception hall, so what the attendant is telling me is that here is a water supply, so it comes down from the top and comes down the piping down here. So very similar to, um, to Ajaloon Castle. And this is the privy. So this is the toilet, which is just a straight drop pit toilet. And what he's describing is that circular hole there is the um, pivot point for the, um, the door which would come here. Even Saladin had to go to the bathroom once in a while. So I've just walked in through a hole in the uh, castle wall. But the stairs here aren't overly brilliant, so I won't go in. So it was basically just an opening in the castle wall here. Where I went and saw that reception hall was down there where those um, skylights were. 80 metre reception hall. So coming up these side stairs, there's lots of little holes in the side of the castle, but the stairs look in pretty bad repair. I don't want to risk going down. I can hear voices down there, but I'm too scared to go down those stairs. Carrot Castle is actually a really huge castle. It's really quite intact, a lot of it. It was built over a couple of centuries, and we'll get to look into another couple of places, like down there into the, um, the mosque and prison and over here into another banquet hall. Let's cruise over there. Just to give another perspective of how this is a pretty impenetrable um, fortress on this spur because the incline of the land is just so steep. I just entered through another hallway. Big step into that large reception hall. So I've just come down these very challenging stairs and uh, come to the um, water, the water fountain, like an ablution, ablutions block where you would wash your hands before you go down to pray. Because the mosque is down in this room here and the prison is in that one there. So let's go down and have a look at the mosque first. Let's... 
I've just come down another little dodgy set of stairs into the prison, which is just one really long room. And then if you come up these stairs, there's actually individual cells where um, people of nobility would be kept. So the reason that you would know that these prison cells were for important people is that some of them actually have fireplaces in them and they would hold I think about 10 people so along this entire wall there's prison cells of different sizes That's actually the entryway to the mosque over there, through this slit here. So I've just come out of the prison area and I'm just walking through this section underneath. The castle. And what I think I might find is like a street full of shops. Yeah, I have. Actually, this is um, a street full of bedrooms. So we've passed the bedrooms and now we've come to the marketplace. I wonder if these were the stairs that I noticed before but didn't want to come down. I've just gained access from a different way. I've worked, walked down the hallway where there's initially some bedrooms and then some marketplaces and then I've come to some rooms that are really big. And the interesting thing is they have like a well or a hole in them. So these must have been pretty impressive people, important people who'd be in these rooms. Just a set of stairs going off from that hallway. This is just such a big castle. I've just turned another corner, walked into this room where there's a couple of little fireplaces. This looks like it was a door maybe. It's like a doorway there with some remnants of some stairs. So I've just come from that far end and where that policeman's just walking past. And those people are just coming out of the cavity. That's where those bedrooms and marketplace were. There's a platform up the top there and this gaping cavity here is the horse stables. It's an amazing space. So you can imagine it's filled with horses and smells and feed and noise. Just spectacular. So I'm sitting here in Karak Castle, which was built by Baldwin I of Jerusalem in 1142. 
But the reason that I particularly wanted to come back to Carrick Castle was because since I went, it was here the first time, I did a lot of reading about the Crusades and a lot of YouTube videos. And the one person that really stood out to me was Renard de Chillon, a minor French noble. And when the Crusades were happening, the Franks, the French, were part of the crusade and came to this region of Levant to get back Jerusalem, to hold Jerusalem from the um, Muslims. So for the second crusade, Renald de Chillon came to this area as a 28 year old and he met and married Constance of Antioch when he was 28 years of age. He was of minor nobility, so wasn't really that impressive. And they kept their marriage secret for a, a long time because Baldwin um, did, wasn't um, notified or wasn't consented um, about the marriage. They, according to, depending on what books you read, they had two children, they had um, Agnes and Jean. If you read another one, they've also got Reynald, a son as well. It depends on which literature or which information you read. Reynald de Chillon is either described as a rogue or a hero, a rebel or a villain, a, a goody or a baddie, depending on which side you are looking at it from. There is one story about when he was trying to raise money um, for a crusade or a raid that he put the patron of Antioch, um, beat him up quite severely and put him out in the sun all beaten up and put honey on his head so that um, the insects would get at him. And he was a pretty old man. And so after this kind of torture and abuse, he consented to giving Renald the money for the crusade or the fight that he wanted. After a raid in 1161, Renald was captured by the Muslims and was imprisoned in Aleppo for 15 years. And normally what would happen with a crusader is they would be ransomed by their king someone of Spain or, you know, whoever they were on their crusade for. But because Renal was not overly liked, they left him there. And eventually, after 15 years, he was ransomed for 120,000 gold dinar in 1176. That is a phenomenal amount of money. But while he was imprisoned in Aleppo, um, Constance died in um, 1163. So when he was released, he became envoy to for Manuel, I think Manuel was of Spain, and an envoy to Baldwin um, the fourth of Jerusalem. Baldwin the fourth was the leper, the 16 year old leper. At this time, Renard de Chillon went, um, was married to Stephanie de Milly and they had um, several children. They had Renard, Renald, um, Alice, and depend of course who you're reading, they've got a third one, they've got Aveline. With Baldwin the fourth, the leper king, the 16 year old, um, there was a battle of Mont Gazard. And depending on which literature you read, um, it, was, it is said that Renal de Chillon was the actual leader for that battle. And that was a battle that the Crusaders won and um, Saladin was not happy at all. So from Carrack Castle and Showbook Castle, um, Renal was a pretty evil guy for if you were his enemy, it wouldn't be uncommon for him to throw you over the ramparts uh, and crush you to death over on that spur. 
During 1182, these, these castles were in a perfect position to do raids on pilgrim caravans um, and pilgrims going down to Mecca. Saladin also had trading caravans coming this way and what Ranal would do would be raid them and he wouldn't give them back, wouldn't pay ransom to give them back. So he was really ticking off Saladin. It is said that in 1183 in this castle here, Carrot Castle, when Humphrey IV and Isabella of Jerusalem, Humphrey was 16 and Isabella was 14, they got married here in this castle and Saladin was besieging the castle at the time and what it is said that um, Stephanie de Milly had sent food down to Saladin so that he would not bombard the marital chamber of the, the wedding. With those Red Sea ra raids in about 1183 and in about 1185, Renal de Chillon um, became allied with Sibylla and Guy of Lucerne. With all this aggravation um, with the raiding of the pilgrim caravans and the, the other caravans. It's at this time that Saladin put a jihad on Renal de Chillon. In 1187 to the north of here, Lake Tibris, was the site for the Battle of Hattin. And this was the battle where Guy Lucerne and um, Renal de Chillon were captured by Saladin. And the story goes that Saladin gave water to Guy and Guy drank the water and then he passed the water over to Renal and Renal drank the water. But because Saladin did not offer the water to Renal himself, what he did was invited Renal to his or took Renald to his tent, to, to another place, and basically struck him with a sword and while he fell down, severed his head. And that was um, 4th of July, 1187. So I keep saying it depends on who you read and who you listen to because there is several different sources that you can get your information from. One source said that it was because he didn't because he drank the water that wasn't offered to him personally by Saladin that he was beheaded. Another said that it was because he would not convert to Islam and that's why he was beheaded. So Renal de Chillon was about 61 or 62 when he was beheaded by Saladin where you know, the other two excuses were probably pretty good. Drinking the water wasn't offered to you and um, not converting. But I think it's a third. I think it is more, it was a really political move by Saladin because Renard had just been such a pain in his side for such a long period of time with all the raids and, and stealing the, um, you know, rioting the pilgrim caravans and stealing all the, the trade stuff. I think it was a political move to get rid of Renal. So there's three really main sources that you get your information about Renal, and one of them was from William of Tyre, who wrote really poorly of Renal because Ray was basically humiliating the Christian world with all of these these raids, and he wasn't listening to what the the, the kings were saying. The second place to find it is in Muslim history, historical documents, because when Saladin actually wrote back to say why he had killed Renald, it demonstrated that he was really a formidable opponent and was really quite respected as, a, 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 as an opponent. So he was actually really quite respected by the Muslims. Some modern historians say that he was a maverick, that he was really disrupting the Christian cause and humiliating. Some say that he was a marauder that just could not resist temptation. 
Some Christian historians say that he was a martyr and that he was experienced and he was a reasonable leader. One of the primary reasons that he is actually a good leader is because he actually prevented unification of all of the Muslim states that were around just because he kept disrupting so much of the surrounding Muslim area. So there are a lot of historical novels that dis have that include Renal de Chillon and they will give very different stories, different perspectives of him. But if you want to see a representation of him, you can look at Ridley Scott's 2005 movie, um, Kingdom of Heaven, where Brendan Gleeson plays Renal as a big hairy buffoon, basically, that grovels and humiliates himself and has, had, has to kiss the hand of um, Baldwin IV, the 16-year-old leper king's hand. It's a pretty interesting depiction of Renard de Chillon. But just to be here at Carrick Castle at the moment, Chobot Castle is closed for renovation into the next year. So this is um, February of 2020. So until 2021, I can't go back to Chobot Castle. So if you want to walk in the footsteps of the Crusaders, <laughs> come to Carrick Castle. So that was our short little walk around Carrick Castle. Come and play with me. Come to Jordan. Come and visit. Come with me. Just ask me what adventures you could have when you come here to Jordan. So much to do. Stay safe. Happy travels.